skyfairwinds.com let me get my camera to work proper fairwinds.com um, yeah, I don't know. He's been following this nuclear thing. I guess he's some type of nuclear scientist or something. Fairwinds.com. Fairwinds Associates. Uh, they do analysis and solutions to complex engineering, environmental, energy, and legal issues. And, um, you know, this latest video that he just put out, he's talking about uh, this tent that they're talking about building over Fukushima to semi-contain the the nuclear fallout, the radioactive material that's being dispersed all throughout the uh, all throughout the environment, everywhere, worldwide, globally. Uh, this uh, nuclear radiation, the radioactive material from the three active nuclear meltdowns that are going on in Fukushima is going up into the air and it's being swept all around the globe by the uh, by the the global winds, uh, especially in the, in the high altitudes, they they tend to carry whatever material gets swept up there for a long time. And uh, with the meltdown being a, a high heat uh, area, the um, the debris from it is going high up into the into the air. Uh, basically, it's a pool of molten metal that superheats on its own. Uh, uranium and plutonium, they both do that. Once you get them at a certain uh, weight and a certain density, that they will just superheat and continue to heat. And um, Yeah, so uh, something he said in this video is that uh, there's speculation now that the... Uh, the meltdown has melted out of the nuclear containment that it's now in the ground that um, uh, I had made that speculation that that's what I thought had happened a couple weeks ago based on the amount of radiation having spiked that uh, it used to be that the amount of radiation at Fukushima was uh, was was dwindling is becoming less and less but then a couple weeks ago, there was a point at which the radiation spiked, and uh, the spike that I heard of was only in Fukushima that it received any press. Uh, I don't know if there was any type of spike, but it would make sense that there was uh, in California and Washington and everywhere, everywhere that this radiation is going from this meltdown is, uh, I don't know, would have at that point where the... Uh, nuclear material had melted out of its contamination, uh, so the uh, the steel structures that uh, were put in place and the concrete and all that to hold the uh, the pool of water that the bars used to be heating, that it, it melted through all of that finally, and now it is in the soil, and uh, thus the um, it's starting to eat through the soil, and it will eat through the soil a lot faster than it will eat through concrete or steel, and so it's going to melt very quickly into the molten core of the earth. That, uh, and I don't know exactly what the result of that's going to be. It could be super volcano Japan. You know, who knows what happens when uh, uh, uranium melts through all the way to the center of the earth. You know, there's. Um, to my understanding, there's been no, you know, there's been no similar test to to determine what it is. You know, maybe some uh, you know, physics gurus could, you know, punch up some uh, calculation as to what it is that will occur when the molten meltdown uranium hits the core of the Earth. You know, hits the molten magma. But um, you no, know, it should be interesting. It's gonna be big. And um, you know, another thing that he says in here is this tent that they're putting over the Fukushima meltdown to prevent the... Uh, it's actually a tent to prevent the, uh, the contamination of the immediate vicinity. That it's going to lower the amount of contamination in the immediate vicinity. But uh, there is a stack to the tent and... Uh, it's going to be an open top that they're going to vent 
the radiation and the radioactive material into the atmosphere, but just at a higher level than if it was just coming out of the building right there at ground level. So uh, there will be less radiation in the surrounding community. There will be less radiation right there at the site, but the radiation will still be getting put into the air and it will still be getting swept globally, which is what this guy at fairwinds.com, that's what he says. And um, I guess I'll let you listen to that right now. Well, the next thing I'd like to talk about just briefly is that a tent is almost ready to be built over the uh, Unit 1 at Fukushima. Now, that's not going to solve a lot of problems, but it's going to solve two problems. The purpose of the tent is to reduce the amount of radiation on site. The radiation inside that tent is still going to have to go somewhere or else it's going to build up and become, um, become lethal. So what's going to have to happen to that radiation is going to be exhausted up the stack. Now that's good for the workers because it gets that radiation airborne at a much higher elevation and it's good for the surrounding communities but it doesn't solve the problem of radiation releases from Fukushima. So I wanted you to know that when you see this, this tent that's being built over Fukushima 1, uh, it doesn't solve the problem. It pushes the, the, the cesium deposition further away from the site. It's important for the workers that they get less cesium, but it is not on a global basis reducing the amount of cesium load that we're all receiving. And that brings me to my final point. That's that the, the um, deposition of cesium throughout northern Japan is extensive. Now, the Japanese are allowing that material to be burned. If the concentration of radioactivity on anything that's radioactive is less than 8,000 becquerels per, per kilogram. What that means is two pounds by the kilogram can be disintegrating at 8,000 disintegrations every second, and the Japanese are allowing that to be burned. Here in the United States, that would be considered radioactive waste and would have to be disposed of underground for, for thousands of years. But as long as it's less than 8,000 disintegrations per second, the Japanese are allowing that to be burned. Not only that, and this is actually more disconcerting, they're allowing blending. So if one sample had 24,000 disintegrations per second and another two had none, they combine those so that the three on average have 8,000 disintegrations per second and they're allowed to be burned. Well, that has lots of serious ramifications. First off, it's basically the material that's already come out of Fukushima and is on the ground is now going airborne again, deliberately. So the... Yeah, so I don't know, basically what he was saying there is that uh, Jap uh, the Japanese government, they have allowed now for radioactive material to be gathered up and to be burnt, which is putting it all way high up in the atmosphere and it's being carried everywhere. You know, so um, this has been an assault on humanity globally and it continues to be an assault on humanity globally and the... Um, the Japanese Prime Minister, he, he resigned today, but, um, you know, you know what I didn't see? Uh, I didn't see a whole bunch of people storm into his palace like uh, happened in Libya you know, a couple days ago. Uh, and, you know, that, you know, he's on the run trying to, you know, fleeing for his life and whatnot. Uh, so, you know, what did he do? He just resigned, you know, was still the same bunch of corrupt bureaucrats running the Japanese government, you know, and apparently, you know, nothing's going to be done, you know, to prosecute him, and nothing's going to be done to, you know, stem this nuclear meltdown disaster that's going on.